Hey guys, Aaron here. Today we're gonna to be going over the brake master cylinder replacement for GM trucks and SUVs years 2001 through 2007. Now the particular truck that we're working on today is a 2006 Chevy Silverado 2500 HD. And as you can see, it does have a Hydra Boost power brake unit. However, if you do have a conventional vacuum brake booster, the parts and procedures are gonna be the exact same for that as well. The issue that we're experiencing is we're having a lot of brake fluid actually leaking in between the master cylinder and the Hydro Boost unit. Uh, we're having to fill the reservoir about every week or so. The light comes on the dash telling you that you have a low brake fluid condition. And as you can see, we do have quite a big puddle just from sitting overnight. And yes, that is brake fluid. Now the replacement of the master cylinder on this truck is pretty straightforward. However, there are a couple special tips and tricks I wanna show you along the way to help the job go by easier and to make sure the install is correct. So before we get into that, let's go ahead and go over the parts and tools we're gonna to need to get the job done. So for this job, we'll need a 15 millimeter socket and a 3 8 extension, a 3 8 ratchet. I'm also going to be using my Milwaukee M12 power ratchet. Just makes the job go by a little bit quicker. Also going to be needing a master cylinder bleed kit. A couple fittings and hoses is what that is. I'll go ahead and throw a link in the description if you want to purchase one of those. Also a master cylinder for the truck as well. I'm going to be putting a brand new, not a remanufactured cylinder on this vehicle and then also minimum two quarts of dot three brake fluid i buy the dot three brake fluid by the gallon as you can see um but you know with my luck having to bleed the system two or three times one quart just isn't enough pick up at least two quarts for this job and also one important tool that we're going to be using is a 14 millimeter or 9 16 line wrench. This is a wrench that goes around the brake line fitting and it just ensures that we don't strip it upon removal so before we go ahead and remove our old master cylinder, we wanna go ahead and properly bleed our new master cylinder. That way, it just cuts down on the swap time. We don't have the old master cylinder off the vehicle, the lines are leaking, and then we have to prime our new one. It's gonna be all ready to go. I like to go ahead and prime this master cylinder in a vise that way we know it's perfectly even when this is mounted in the vehicle it's mounted at an angle and chances are you'll have a little bit of air in the front section get trapped and we won't be able to bleed all that air out of the master cylinder and our brake pedal will feel a little bit spongy so the first thing to do of course is just to put the master cylinder uh in a vise that's level and then we're going to go ahead and put our adapters from our brake bleeding kit inside and just get them hand tight that way they don't leak After that, let's go ahead and take our hoses and attach them to our adapters and lead them directly into the reservoir. And after that's done, I'm gonna go ahead and fill up the uh, reservoir with dot three brake fluid up to the max line. All right, now everything is set up to where we're ready to go ahead and bleed all the air out of our master cylinder. I'm just gonna be using a little uh, eight inch extension that I attached to my ratchet here just as a little um, tool to push against the back of the piston of the master cylinder. You can use a screwdriver or any, um, you know, just about anything that can fit inside of here and push that in. It's gonna take about, you know, I don't know, five or six times for us to bleed all the air out. We're actually be able to see bubbles and hear bubbles come out of these lines. And when that stops, we know that our master cylinder has been bled properly. All right, so this new unit here is properly bled. Let's go ahead and remove our old unit from the vehicle, put this bad boy in, and then let's go ahead and go over the brake bleeding procedures that we need to do to get that pedal nice and firm. So the first thing we need to do is just break loose the fittings that go into the master cylinder from the brake lines and um, using a line wrench, a 14 millimeter or 9 16 we can do that. It is important to use a line wrench versus a regular wrench, especially if you have a lot of rust on your vehicle. Uh, these fittings can become kind of seized and I believe they are pretty soft. So let's go ahead and crack these loose and then we could take our 15 millimeter and remove the two nuts holding on the master cylinder.
Okay, now we're ready to go ahead and fully remove the lines and the fittings from the master cylinder itself. There are two, one for the rear and front brakes. Once we do that, let's go ahead and remove our master cylinder and replace it with the new one as quickly as possible, just to minimize the amount of air that we introduce into the system. All right, so we got our new master cylinder installed. Now it's time to go ahead and bleed all the air out of the braking system. Now there's a couple ways to do this. GM actually recommends that you have two people to bleed the brakes, one to push down the pedal and then the other to open and close um, the bleed screws on each wheel. Unfortunately, I don't have two people. It's just here me today. So I'm gonna go ahead and use my vacuum um, brake bleeder. It's a very handy tool to have. It actually introduces a vacuum into the brake system and sucks all the air. One thing you do have to um, be careful of any way you're bleeding brakes is that your master cylinder um, reservoir does not get low on fluid. If at any time when you're bleeding the brakes and the master cylinder reservoir runs out of fluid, you're gonna have an issue where you're actually introducing more air into the system and you're gonna have to start all over. I'll go ahead and throw all the step-by-step -step instructions for bleeding the brakes on this vehicle. Um, it is the factory service manual step-by-step. -step. So what it recommends that we do is go to the rear passenger wheel, open up that bleed screw and start there. Once we're done with that wheel, we're gonna head over to the rear driver wheel. Then we're gonna go to the passenger front and then we're gonna end with the um, driver front, which is the closest to the master cylinder itself. So if you do have an assistant available, what you're gonna want them to do is just hold down the brake pedal as far and hard as they can. And then you're gonna go and open up the bleed screw of the wheel that you're working on. You're gonna wait a couple seconds and then they're gonna tell you that the pedal has become soft. You close that bleed screw and then they return the brake pedal back to the resting position. Continue doing that until you get no more air out of the system. Um, it's gonna take about four or five times and then work to the next wheel. By the time you reach the front driver wheel, you should have a firm pedal. If you don't, go ahead and do that procedure starting with the rear passenger wheel all over again. And what GM recommends we use is a clear container such as this water bottle and a clear hose. That way you can monitor the air bubbles coming through the hose. And when you get solid fluid coming through and normal air bubbles, you know that that wheel and that location has properly been bled of the air. On rare occasion, I'll have one of these trucks with a soft pedal. I'll bleed and bleed and bleed the brakes as much as I can, and it still is soft. There's one thing that um, GM recommends we do, and that's an automated bleed test with a bi-directional scanner. And what that test will do is it will force out any air inside the ABS control module and pump, um, which is located right underneath here inside the frame rail. The test will go through a series of you pushing down the brake and applying voltage to the ABS motor. Um, you'll hear some noises and some actuations of the ABS pump. That's completely normal. However, after completing the test, um, you should have a nice and firm brake pedal after that. All right guys, so just got done with the test drive. Everything seems to be pretty good. The pedal is nice and firm. And of course we no longer have any leaking out of the master cylinder seal. So I uh, hope this video has helped you out. Please check the link in the description and the OEM proper bleeding procedure for this vehicle for your reference. I'll include it in the link down in the description. Thanks as always, guys. See you next time.